Today we are in Snowdonia National Park with the brand new Panasonic Lumix S1. Now we've got the camera for a couple of days, we have this incredible scenery and we're going to test out just what it can do. Now we do have to say the sample that we've got is a pre-production model so when it is released some things may change a bit but hopefully this camera should give us a nice sense as to what it's all about. Yeah everything in this video will hopefully be shot with the S1 itself so that's stills and video although we do only have one body for a couple of days so we may have to use the GH5S at some points. But don't worry just look down there yes down there and you will see it'll say either shot on the Lumix S1 or shot on the GH5S so you actually know what you're looking at. Okay, let's see what it can do. I started this morning doing some long exposures. We've got such a pretty lake here in the snow-capped mountains. We've had some low light because we got here before sunrise. So I've nicked Chris's ND. I've managed to get about 15 second, 10 second exposure on some of these shots. And it's nice using the S1 because it's like the G9 in terms of when you set a long exposure and you press the shutter, it counts down the seconds you have left with you. So if you're doing like two seconds, it doesn't matter. But when you're sitting there doing 30 second exposures, if you're trying to shoot lightning or something like that, and you're just pressing it over and over and over again, it does make time feel like it's going a little quicker when you can see how long is left. The EVF on this is just fantastic. It's so clear. It's actually the highest resolution EVF in any full frame mirrorless currently worldwide. So it's super impressive and you can really see how nice that is, how much of a difference it makes. The screen is also very nice on this. Panasonic have put in some white pixels or something they described it as, uh, which basically means it's brighter, it's easier to view in sunlight. We found we've got some quite harsh sunlight coming through as the clouds move in and out and it is a lot nicer to view with. Um, Chris has said the same, obviously, for doing video. It's consistently bright enough to see what you're doing, which is great. But the battery is running down a little bit now. It's very cold out today. So we're gonna head back, get the battery charged up and talk a little bit more about the specs. So sorry, this isn't the most sexiest of shots. We've just come back to the combination to put the one battery that yes. we have on charge because, you know, without it, we can't do anything. No. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity just to run through the body of the camera. Take it away, Amy, what have we got? So body-wise, magnesium alloy chassis, it feels like a tanky GH5 G9. Yeah, um, it's a beefed up version of yeah. camera, same sort of weather ceiling, works down to minus 10 degrees, which yeah. is pretty cold that's, to be fair. Yeah, that's good. It's, yeah. it's very good nice feeling yeah. that same sort of rubbery exterior so you get a good grip on it yeah. you've got a big grip on the front so you never feel like you're going to drop it mm. same with the thumb grip on the back buttons and dials wise same you've got as the you usual. know all the normal stuff yeah feels very panasonic there's a lot going on which is good uh, mode dial is lockable on the back we're using this eye cup this is an additional extra but it's a good additional extra, definitely get it. Yeah, of course you get the standard smaller one, uh, but this one just proper encloses your eye into that EVF. And I mean, to be honest, you know, Lumix, like not saying anything negative here, but this is just made of rubber, probably cost you about 10p to make. Chuck that in for free. Yeah, it's really nice for Chuck stills for and free. video. Yeah. Like, just give us the icon. Yeah. But we don't know the price for it, we've not been told. No, we don't know yet, but we've just got this as an accessory to use. So yeah. EVF itself, stunning. We've spoken about that already. 5.7K dot is the spec on that. Yeah, if you're still shooting with optical viewfinders because yeah. you're like, no, I don't like EVFs, it's not real, this will be the one to turn you. Yeah, definitely. If it doesn't, you're not going to use EVF ever. Yeah. This side, storage. So whole side of the camera, we've got one SD, one XQD. That's good, because obviously we can do an instant backup. We can also hot swap as well, but it's bad because we've got one SD and one XQD, and these two different things. Yeah. So that means you've got to buy two different cards. And XQD cards, they're, they're not, not, not cheap, they are expensive. Yeah, they yeah. are, they're a lot of money. But on the other hand, there's a big upside, which is Z7, Z6, Nikon have been cornering the market when it comes to XQD really, which means they're not widely available and they're expensive. However, now we've got another camera that's using XQD. Hopefully that will drive prices way down and they'll be more available in the coming months, years. So yeah. in the long run, it may be a big positive in terms of memory. Yeah, and also further down the line, this will be able to take CFast Express because it's the same sort of connector. So. Yes. Uh, so on this side, we've got ports. So we have full size HDMI and USB-C. On this one, we have the mic and headphone port. Yeah. Great for you. Need that, obviously, if you're gonna do any filming. What's also nice as well is that, actually, let's take a step back. What's annoying is when a camera manufacturer makes a new mirrorless camera and they put nice new video features in there and you think, oh, what about, you know, audio? And you've got a three and a half mil jack, you know, that's not professional audio. 
What's really nice with the S1 is that this works with the XLR adapter that was made for the GH4 and the GH5. And that's what we're using to record this at the moment on the GH5S. And you can just swap it over, go straight onto there, and you've got professional XLR yeah, audio. Straight onto here. So body-wise, we're thinking it's a win. Yeah. One downside. One downside, us. flip it round. It's the screen. Now the screen is nice, the screen itself is good, it's just the way it's mounted. It's a, yeah. what, what do they call it? Triaxial. Triaxial, triaxial. I can't say that properly. It's basically not a fully articulating yeah. screen, which for me, they are just better. Yeah, they are. So you've got here, it goes to about 70 degrees. Didn't want it to go to 90 degrees anyway. I'm more of a 70 degrees type of guy. You know, the, that's the sweet spot. For stills, it's all right. Like you can shoot portrait in it if I get it back out again. You can you can shoot portrait fine. Just means that you can't film yourself. You can't check your framing, you know, if you're doing an interview before your tart arrives. It, it's just a nice thing to have a fully articulating yeah. screen. It's a much bigger deal for video than stills. Yeah. But the screen itself, Great. Yeah, really I can get over res. it. I can get yeah. over it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not a huge downside for what the rest of the camera is. So we're going to wait for the one battery to finish charging, and then we'll go go back out and hopefully do some actual shooting. Yeah, with do the some camera. actual work. When it's turned on. Yes. So let's talk about the video recording spec because with the S1, it's not that straightforward. So out of the box, for you to buy it, you'll be able to record 4K up to 30 frames per second in 8-bit 420, and that's at 100 megabits per second. You can up it to 4K 60 frames per second, again, 8-bit 420 at 150 megabits per second, but that is with a slight cropping on the sensor. Now, I don't know what that crop is officially, because I've not been told, but to me, it looks like an APS-C size crop, so about 1.6. So not a million miles away from Super 35. Now, there is a recording time limit on that. With 4K 30 frames a second, it is unlimited. That's pretty much the best that you can do, really, without purchasing the additional software key. If you remember the GH4, to get Vlog L, you had to pay and get that software key to unlock it. It's the same with the S1, which is a bit of a shame. What that then unlocks is 10-bit recording internally, also output 10-bit if you're doing 60 frames a second, and it can also output 12-bit. I don't have the details on the 12-bit, but just saying it can output 12-bit is pretty exciting. And it also unlocks full Vlog, not Vlog L, but the full Vlog. So without that, which is basically what I have here, because at the moment, filming this, that software key doesn't exist, nor do I know how much it's gonna cost. So everything you're seeing in this video has been shot in the 8-bit 420 internal codex. All in Cine-D, just because I can match it as well with the GH5S, because I don't have Vlog. We're losing the light here in Snowdonia. We were going to stay here for the entirety of sunset, but as you can see, we've been ravaged by a very prolific species. They, they only come out at dusk and dawn, sunset and sunrise, and they're just coming in their droves. They're all around us now. We may not make it out. Photographers. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> There's so many of them. Their vision is based on movement. If we don't move, they will not see us. Keep still. <laughs> right, should we go so we don't end up with the same shot as everyone else here? Yeah. I'm just sort of testing this IS at the moment. So we've got OIS on in the lens and we've got it on in the body, which gives us six stops of dual IS. Um, and I've just focused right in on these fir trees across the lake. Um, I'm at 105 mil. I'm at one fourth of a second. I can actually put that f-stop up a bit. I'm on f10 now. Yeah, that's dead sharp. No movement at all. So that's really good. That's really nice to know that you can shoot like that if you need to, if things get really dark and you can still shoot handheld like that. Right, because Amy doesn't show up about weather. Go on, Amy. Do you forecast? Today at Capel Curry, don't know if that's the right way to say that, we've got cloud and then the forecast for later in the afternoon is some cloud and then as you can see over the next few days i'm just going to keep flicking through we've got cloud up at uh, penlithrig iraq perfect pronunciation <laughs> we've got some more cloud i'm still going through we're two weeks ahead now got some more cloud down here at the at the river what i'm hearing um, is there's, there's some, some cloud, cloud yes, along cloud. here wonderful that's the forecast for while we're here testing the s1 um, well, to be fair, by the sounds of it, its body is like weatherproofed. Well, it's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a very common sight on these trips. Amy using yet another one of my bits of gear. She never brings <laughs> her own tripods. 
never brings real filters. I think we're using both my SD cards in <laughs> both of these cameras, so you know what? It's hard to think what Amy is bringing sometimes, but hats. Ha ha she does have some good hats, and her weather forecast, you know, we her weather interest is, you know, quite. That takes up a lot of my suitcase. Quite something, yeah. Geez. I bring a lot of chocolate. I, that's what I bring. Mm, she does do that, to be fair. <laughs> So I've just sat up on this bridge right at the bottom of the lake and I'm going to try the high resolution shot. You shouldn't really do it over large bodies of water because of the way it works, but this is such a still lake that I'm hoping it'll work. So high resolution photo, we see it a lot now, but just a quick explanation. Because we've got in-body image stabilisation, it means the sensor can move. Essentially what it does is it takes four images with the sensor in different positions and then puts them together to create a really high resolution image. So this is a 24.2 megapixel camera. It creates about a 96 megapixel image out of the high resolution shots. It's creating the high resolution image now. It does that very, very quickly. So about one second left. Yep, done. And that's all sorted. And I've got the original image to show the difference. So this is a really good example of why you need everything to be still in your high res shot. So here, there's a road next to where we're standing. It's very quiet, but unfortunately we had a couple of cars come through on the last high res shot that I just did. And you can really see why you need no movement when you do this sort of image. So this is a good example of what it can look like. Obviously it's very obvious because they're bright car lights, but do be aware that if you're shooting a high res shot and you've got a little bit of wind moving through, the trees are moving maybe, it will do that. Um, also, what a great use for my tri-axial 70 degree screen. Hey, look at that. we found a use. Chris, check it out. Oh, look oh. At oh not a 90. Oh. 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 What am I find? What am I? I'm over here. Oh, hang on. Oh. Nah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So we're just at Betsy Coid now, we've just come to the station, it's deserted and of course as you can see it is dark. Now just at the end of the station there's a bridge, I'm doing this bit here because there's no light whatsoever on the bridge and I'm a bit concerned that you just won't be able to see me very clearly. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set the S1 on a tripod, I'm just going to ramp up the ISO, really not a scientific test but just so you guys can see how that noise is induced as we go higher in those ISOs. For this test I'm just going to whack it into standard just so you know that I'm not doing anything to this picture or whatnot uh, in the custom settings or in post. So it's basically straight out of camera, standard, going up and see what we think. This has a feature that I love, uh, which is next to the top LCD screen, a lot of cameras don't have this anymore, it has a button to light up the buttons. Yes, great feature. It just makes it so easy to work with. So we are heading off to get some food now and put the battery on charge for the S1. Although when we're on the bridge, it was still reading like 67% or something. And as we've been filming since two o'clock and it's pretty cold, I think that's not too bad actually. Quite impressed with that. So get it on charge, ready for tomorrow. Today we've had a slightly delayed morning. We were ready, in the dark, ready to go out and try and chase another sunrise. Unfortunately, what was meant to be a little bit of cloud turned into quite a lot of snow, as you can see behind me, and the visibility was appalling. In fact, you couldn't see any of this this morning, barely even this house that's right here, right next to where we're staying. So it was terrible. It's eased off a bit now. The roads are a little bit clearer. So we're gonna head up to Holyhead and hopefully it'll be sunny and warm. So I've already talked about the recording spec when it comes to 4K. Of course, we can get two times slow motion effect going up to 4K 60. Realistically, here in the UK, you're gonna go 4K 50 for that 25 frames a second for PAL. But what about HD? Now, what's really quite nice is that this camera can go up to 180 frames per second, which if you're delivering in a 30 frames per second timeline, it's ideal. But realistically, again, in the UK, you're gonna go to 150. Now, there's a 15 minute record time, and there is a little bit of a crop in on that sensor again, from my sort of observation, I think it's an APS-C times crop, so maybe 1.5, 1.6 times. On that segment of the sensor that it's doing that crop, there is a full pixel readout, not getting any pixel binning. So yeah, pretty happy with the slow motion capabilities in HD. Oh, I'm getting oh, a bit of water there. Play cool. I don't mind water really, you know. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with the, the HD slow motion on this thing. So one thing to note that I found when shooting with these high speed uh, frame rates is that as soon as you go into that mode, for some reason, I don't have any control over my f-stop, my ISO, or my shutter speed. 
Now, of course, this is a pre-production model. It's running the most basic firmware just to make this camera work. So I'm assuming that that is going to be sorted when it is released. At the moment, the only controls I have is the frame rate and also my EV compensation. So when you're looking at that footage, do bear in mind that I am kind of just shooting blind in auto. And like I said, I do think it will get sorted out when it is released. So I just swapped over to the 70s 200. Obviously it's not that big, that's the lens hood. The sun is sort of breaking through the clouds at points. It's quite heavy cloud over the sea at the moment. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of light on those waves hitting the rock. And also the oyster catchers left as well, but hopefully they'll come back. We're working on hope really for these images. Working on hype. So we've moved further along the coast on Anglesey and we've come to a bit of the beach where we've got some nice dunes going on. It's a little bit more interesting than the bay we were at before. Now we want to test the autofocus on the S1. With in terms of autofocus, there are so many modes. It's crazy how much this has going on. Um, what we're going to try here is the face slash body slash eye slash animal detect autofocus mode so not all people will be really happy to know this does have animal autofocus mode it's the middle of january there aren't many animals here we haven't had a good chance to try that out to be honest that's probably a whole nother video entirely because i know that'll be super super popular um but i do have the next best thing to wildlife which is chris oh yeah sorry yeah i'm here <laughs> so i've said it on continuous we've got continuous bear straight on and we've stuck it on the face slash body slash eye slash animal detect and it's time for chris to go down this big sand dune yeah okay ready yeah oh god <laughs> smoothed it out smoothed it out <laughs> did you please tell me we got it i'd rather not walk away. we got it yay yeah. happy days how's it look oh the card's not in it <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about the autofocus in the S1. So first off, the camera has an L mount. That L mount was developed last year between Sigma, Panasonic and Leica. It got released at Photokina. And this is the first time we're really seeing it in massive production. That mount is made for quality and also ease of use. And it's created a really good contact system with the lenses, which means it has very fast communication with lenses. And therefore this has crazy quick autofocus. So, the body itself can do 489 calculations for autofocus in a second. So a refresh rate of 489 calculations in a second. And it also has autofocus of 0.08 seconds, which is the fastest in the full frame mirrorless market, which is a huge plus for this camera. Now, of course, this autofocusing capability does translate over to video and it translates quite well. Now, at the moment, we're filming on the S1 We've got the 200 mil, well, 70 to 200 mil, all the way out onto 200 mil at F4. And we're using the body and face track to sort of lock on and keep me in focus. Now, I must say, I have been using the autofocusing system on this thing for quite a bit filming. Now, I only really put faith in Canon with that dual pixel autofocus when I do use autofocus for video. And I must say that on this, on the S1, I would put faith in it. It does, it really does lock on and it's such an asset to have when you're you know, out and about filming and you want to concentrate on other things, your composition and whatnot, things are moving quickly, just to be able to switch over into AFC and rely on it, it really does work quite well. Ah. We are back at base with the S1 now. Sorry for the shot. This is all we could find in the whole house yeah. that wasn't. This house is not built for light and also for bald people because you can see a nice sheen <laughs> glaring you in the eyes. So I'm sorry, but this is going to do for the summary, I'm afraid. Yes, yeah. So we've got back now S1 for stills. I've really enjoyed using it. The image quality has been good. I downloaded a sort of. Um, Silky Picks? Yeah, like a sort of pre-production version, if you like, of Silky Picks with the raw codec for this camera last night. Just had a little look at the low light stuff we took. I was really impressed. Yeah. Uh, noise wise, yeah, there's noise on the really high ISO shots, but the I'm so there. tired. The ISO. <laughs> the ISO shots, but when you're shooting at 51,200, what do you expect? 51,200. You know, there's going to be noise there. so but really impressed with how it's worked, the feel of it, it's built well. Yes, it's bigger. It's probably one of the bigger full frame cameras on the market at the yeah, moment. It feels in terms bigger of than the EOS R and that felt oh, yeah. quite big. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger than that. But it's comfortable, it feels yeah, very sturdy. It feels good, grip is yeah. good. The rubberiness of the body's nice. Rubberiness, 
yeah. technical term. Um, but yeah, I think and I've, I think you've had the same experience with video, really. Yeah, and ob obviously coupled with the in-body stabilization, it does work very well. It reminds me of like, you know, when the GH5 came out for Micro Four Thirds, that in-body stabilization in video worked amazingly well. And I kind of feel like this is the same for yeah. full frame. It also has a like boost mode that makes those motors work a little bit harder just for video. So, I mean, yeah. I've been using that. It, it works really well. It's been good for stills as well. You know, I can use nice slow shutter speeds if I want to, especially when doing landscapes and things like that. And also when you're shooting with the 70s 200, because they've bought this out with a 24105 and a 70s 200, both F4s as their so native nice. lenses. Yeah. Um, 70s 200 sometimes when you've got a little bit of zoom going on and you're looking up your hands shake a little bit sometimes you lose your subject or you can't quite get the focus with that 70s 200 with that uh dual is it just keeps things really still makes it really easy to track which is great yeah and whilst we're talking about lenses one feature that i really did like on this is that obviously most of these lenses that are going to come out with the uh, mirrorless cameras for photography they're fly by wire which means they're electronically controlled when you turn that focus ring to actually focusing the lens now with the s1 what's really nice is that you can set custom throws so you know with cine glass you'd normally have quite a long throw for your focus puller so you can have that on this or you can dial it right like way back to like you know 50 degrees if you wanted to just a really quick uh, f focus throw which i think is like a really useful tool it's something i've never seen on a video camera. No, it's such a professional feature. It allows you to do such a professional look. Yeah. And and that's something we found actually that there are really good features for stills and video. So in in stills we've got the 14 bit raw. We've got the really good uh, noise ratios at high ISOs. Yeah. We've got the high res photo, you know. And then your side of things, you've got that focus throw, you know, adaptable. There's more things than that. I'm but... saying <laughs> things that I don't know. Um, but you've got the audio so professional yeah. audio going in. So it's just such a good hybrid. Yeah, I mean, for me, the one thing is how much is that upgrade key going to be for the software that's going to unlock Vlog and 10-bit? If that is a reasonable price, then for me, from a video point of view, I think that this could be the camera of 2019 for this sort of category. Yeah, for this category, it's performed so well. And we've only got a pre-production. There have been things on this where we've thought that's not working right, something's not working, it'll suddenly not turn off. You know, normal pre-production stuff, we get this a lot yeah. when we get sample cameras. The difference is we don't normally get to take one away so early. Yeah. So we've been really lucky being able to do that. But on the other hand, it just means we're getting some of the normal pre-production issues that you get with early firmware updates. That won't be the case, obviously, when production models yeah, get Yeah, and of course, out. we don't have all of the information, so... No, 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 we don't even have the full specs yet. So, yeah. you know, there's things you might be wondering about now, which we haven't included in this video, mainly because we don't know. Um, so if you need that, obviously the camera's been released now, we have all the information, so pop onto the website, there'll be loads of info there, and if you're still not sure, you can always give us a call, send us an email, put a comment below, and we'll try our best to get you all the information that you need, or of course, pop into one of our stores, yeah. and you can actually pick place. the camera up and try it when it's in there, so that's always mm. a nice thing to do. Yeah, got any questions? Comment below, like, subscribe if you want to, you might not want to, but hopefully if you've watched all of this up to now, yeah, we're doing something working. okay, yeah. I think. Yeah, unless you just watch it for a laugh. That's just cruel. Don't do that. Don't do that. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye.